see you in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. I know it's a little bit cool outside, but it feels good to me. That's one of my favorite times of the year. We've got a little cooler environment. Yesterday, Janet and I rode up to Stone Mountain, North Carolina, and did a five and a half mile loop up the mountain and around the other side. By the time we got home, we were wore out. <laughs> But I'm feeling good today. Feeling good this morning. It's good to be good to be uh, refreshed like that. To be outside, outdoors, and, and to look at God's uh, beauty and creation, and to feel His presence uh, in our lives. And we are, are thankful for that. If if the scouts haven't been there, you need to go. It is awesome. It's, it's on your bucket. It, it should be on everybody's bucket list if you like to hike. It's a great place. Ah, uh, let's see. We've got a number of things I want to mention this morning about uh, things that going on in the church this coming Tuesday at 11 a.m. at Firestone Grill. The men are going to meet for their um, breakfast, and we would love to have a head count. All men are invited to that, and there's a sign-up sheet in the hallway. Uh, Tuesday morning. Okay, we're about here. <laughs> Do remind me. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what's on my calendar for Tuesday morning, but remind me definitely because uh, I, I forget. I have a bad problem out there. 
Um, and then the scouts are collecting non-perishable items uh, for people in need in our community. And there is a box that you bring your, your goods to um, in the hallway, in the fellowship hall. And it's uh, scouting for food. So uh, Jason and the troop and Emily will appreciate your help in doing that. And then uh, we are planning a joint Thanksgiving service with Grace Point International Church. Grace Point is a church that shares our building. They're meeting in the fellowship hall. Um, and um, they are so looking forward to having a joint service with us. Uh, Marty is, is so uh, thankful of our church and your outreach to them and making them feel welcomed and, and appreciated in the church. And um, we're going to have a joint service, uh, have communion, and then gather in the fellowship hall for a Thanksgiving uh, meal together uh, in this covered dish. So we hope that... Um, uh, you'll be able to attend that and be able to be a part of that. And that's the Sunday before the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. So well, we hope you can make it to that. As uh, you also may be aware of, we are um, dealing with the air, the air conditioning system, heating systems in the educational building. And um, we don't know exactly what we're going to do with that yet, but just be in prayer. We are collecting money for that. It's gonna, there's going to need to be some work done on it. Um, and just be aware of our um, amount that we have spent over the budget. And that is because of maintenance issues um, that we've had to incur this year. Um, we've, we've, we've received over the budget. What have we budgeted? But we have spent more than um, we've received. So just being aware of that. And Deacon uh, of the Week is Clifford Ramsey. There's his telephone number. If you need uh, someone, you can't contact us here at the church office. Be, feel free to give uh, Clifford a call. And then the women are having a Bible study now on Thursday evenings at 4 o'clock in the church library. And Kim's here, and if you're interested in being part of that study, uh, please let her know. Um, and I guess back in, de in December, you'll pick up again the uh, monthly lunches, maybe, um, when you gather together. And we are collecting water, Gatorade, toboggans, gloves, and socks for the Teresa box. Um, so we appreciate your generosity in all these things. Well, let's uh, join together as we have our call to worship this morning. It is from George Herbert's Come, My Way, My Truth, My Life. Let's join together. I'll start, I'll start again. <laughs> Come, my way, my truth, my life. Such a way as Jesus Christ. Such a truth as ends all strife. Such a life as killeth death. Come, my joy, my love, my heart. Such a joy as men can move. Such a love as none can part. Such a heart as joy in love.
let me just say before I read the Old Testament scripture that last week I was surprised. I, you, you, you got me. I wasn't expecting that. Usually our church, well, we've had this tradition of about every five years have a pastor appreciation time. And um, you, you caught me off guard. I didn't know what, what to say. But let me just say thank you. Thank you for all that, uh, you know, that, that you did for me. Really appreciate it. Um, something happened to me this morning that has never happened to me before. Um, while I've been in the ministry. A uh, young lady showed up at the church. Um, while everybody was in Sunday school, school class. Um, and um, Don and I were sitting out there in the front talking. And she said, I'm looking for Pastor Kent. And I said, I'm Pastor Kent. And she hands me an envelope. And she said, uh, I'm from Revolution Church. And we just want to know we appreciate you as pastor of this church. And thank you for all you do for the community. And um, here's, here's a card that we got for you. And then there was a gift card for $50 from another church. That just blew my mind. Uh, I never heard of that before. Have y'all heard of anything like that before? I never have either. So, praise God. Uh, it is amazing the things that are going on now between uh, the church at Revolution and ours and Grace Point International and how we're, we're working together for the kingdom. It's, um, it's inspiring. It really is. And I just want to give thanks for that. Our Old Testament lesson is from Psalms 4. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and their new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare then for prayer.
When I found the bulletin cover uh, this week uh, for our service this week, I was struck um, by those um, tiny people at peace. Join me in prayer. Oh God, we thank you today that you have placed us in this great and prosperous land that the country that we share Lord is founded on truth and liberty and justice for all and God as we consider things that are going on around the world, especially places like the Ukraine and like Israel. We thank you for living here where things like that are out of the ordinary and not the norm. We pray for both the Israelis and the Palestinians and the Russians and the Ukrainians and all those lands where there is strife and conflict and hardship and suffering and death and terror. Lord, we with you hate evil. We love, Lord, all men and women boys and girls and babies and we pray Lord that as we pray today that you will work your will in all these matters and bring peace that we may lie down and rest in you help us Lord as we consider our lives and what we can do for you even at our ages even with our means, even in our stations of life. We know, Lord, you can use us in powerful ways, and we pray that you will do that. Open our hearts to it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and through 17, and then verses 24 and 27. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. And if it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Our next song, our next hymn is hymn number 280, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Let's stand together as we sing.
gospel lesson this morning comes from John's gospel chapter 15 verses 12 through 17. These are the words of our Lord Jesus. This is my commandment that I that that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and anointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whenever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you this commandment that you love one another. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Some have compared the events of October the 7th with those of 9-11 in our own country. When that tragic event happened years ago, um, then President George Bush called the country to a national day of prayer. You may remember that. And um, asked that places of worship all across the country would ring their bells. Um, one pastor in Manhattan wanted to participate. He was a pastor of the oldest building in, um, in the city, St. Paul's Cathedral. It's where President George Washington would go to pray during the war. But the engineers of the church said that it would be impossible because of the location of church. It was very near to ground zero of the collapse of the buildings. But um, one engineer wouldn't take no for an answer. And so he found a way and made his way to it and, and climbed up in the tower and took with him an iron rod and beat the bell for that day of prayer. And the police officers and the firemen that were there working in the rubble paused and stopped and bowed their heads together in reverence because of one brave engineer uh, who would not take no for an answer would not be silent about what took place that day despite the adversity he made it happen some uh, have said that the events of 9-11 made America a more spiritual place, made Americans closer to God. One thing it did do was to remind us that there is evil in the world. And sadly, how many times do we need to be reminded of that? We are reminded by Jesus and the writer of John's epistle that we are to remain, remain in him. That Greek word has a variety of meetings. I pointed those out to you in your worship bulletin. And by the way, I give you homework to do every week, most every week. Go back and look at those passages of Scripture that's made reference in those readings for you to do and, and reflect on that. But that word, that Greek word, meneo, means to, to stay in place, to hold out, to stand fast, to stand still, to remain, to endure, to abide. That one little word means all of that. To hold fast, to abide, to remain in him. Earlier in John's gospel, Jesus said these words. He said that I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who may know, may know, abide in me and I in them. And they bear fruit because apart from me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. We must nail, we must abide, we must remain in Jesus. Well, what does that mean to remain in Jesus? You remember that first experience of maybe puppy love that you had and how you felt 
in that. Or maybe it was that feeling after you were in the church and baptized or confirmed depending on your tradition that you became, you felt so close to God and you felt His Spirit and you just wanted to hold on to that to remain in that feeling with God. And sometimes we, we drift off from that. But Dr. Paul Brand, who was, who was a missionary physician, a doctor in various parts of the world, very remote parts of the world, he uh, once commented on the various peaks of life. He said that at age 27, he felt like at his, he was at his peak physical self. He felt like he could do anything physical. No matter what it was, he felt like he could achieve it. That was, it was achievable to him because of his, his, his stamina and, and his, his feelings about his, his body being able to do things. <coughs> and he said that some people, after they reach their peak, feel like it's all downhill after that. That their life is over after that. That there's nothing else that they can do. Maybe it's a sports star. Once they have reached that peak and that turning downhill, they just give up. Now, he said that at age 57, that he had reached his mental peak. He was a well-known surgeon and physician. He helped leprosy patients uh, in India. And some other people think when they reach that age of their mental peak, if, if they start declining mentally, then things are all downhill after that. That life is, is sad. It's over. Then he went on to say in his 80s that he realized that he was reaching his spiritual peak. That because of his life and his experiences that uh, he was becoming more mature and wise and kinder, a more peaceful human being. And he went on to say this. And I realized when I cross that peak, for me life will not be over, but will just be beginning. Dr. Bland knew how to remain in Christ. He knew how to, to bind himself to Christ. He knew what was important about this life was to be connected to the vine. That's how we gain our strength. That's how we become fruitful in our lives. That's how we, as a church, grow is when we are connected to the vine. When we remain with Christ. When we don't get sidetracked and diverted from other things that are going on around us. But when we hold fast to Christ. I mean, have you ever gone um, um, strawberry picking? You ever been to a strawberry patch and picked your own strawberries? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Usually spring around here and you go and you pick those strawberries. One thing you may have noticed in picking strawberries is that there's a mother plant and about it shoots off these, these, um, I don't know what to call them, little um, runners, yeah, shoots off a little runner and that runner um, hits the ground and starts developing roots. And becomes a separate plant in itself. It's sustained during that time period by the mother plant, but then it starts blooming and it produces other fruit to a point where it itself sends out runners. 
and makes more strawberries. There's nothing I like better than strawberries. Fresh strawberries, natural, oh, mm, good stuff. Good for you too, by the way. Well, that's what we are to be, each of us. To stay connected to the vine, to, the, to our Lord God, but plant roots and fruit and share our knowledge, our experience, our love for the Lord with others. Wherever we go, wherever, wherever we're at, whether we're at work or within our families or our neighbors or rest, wherever, that's what we're about. I brought the stick in today. I, this was a memento for me from uh, the old home place to where I grew up before we, we sold it. Um, and my mom had taken a grapevine from the mountains and planted it in our yard. And it hadn't been kept up well, so it got wild and it started growing up in this huge big oak tree. A, a grapevine. So you got a bunch of grapes that they're feeding, feeding the birds and everything in the air. Um, but I had to get, just, just for memory of it, I had to cut me uh, a little piece of it um, that I use when I portray a Roman centurion. Um, they called it a vetus back then. But it was what the Roman centurions used to discipline his troops. Well, as you can tell, in the middle, you can bend it pretty easily, right? But here, where it attached to the vine, it's as hard as a rock. You can't, there's no way you can move it. It's tough. Now, a normal tree, where there's a branch, it's easy to break there. But not in a grapevine. And Jesus told us that I am the vine and you are the branches. You're connected to God. You're connected to Jesus. It's tough to be let go. You're not going to break off easy. He's going to be there with you, helping you, sustaining you, encouraging you, making you the person that he needs for you to be in this world. And during these, these days of despair, where we see these bad things happening across the world, we need to remember that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We're connected to him. We have power through that. We have strength through that. And we can have faith in that when times are tough. Pray with me. Oh God, we are saddened by things going on in the world. But we rejoice in knowing that we are connected to you. And that with that connection, we have opportunities and responsibilities, Lord. But not only to be connected to you, but to bear fruit because we remain in you. Lord, give us your strength in the days that go forward. And take our hearts now, Lord. And Lord, if there is a soul in this room who needs to know you and accept you as their Lord and Savior, we pray, Lord, that you will reach their heart this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation and commitment. It's always a time of prayer that you can come pray at the, at the altar. Or if you'd like to come and share with me a prayer concern. Or if you want to rededicate your life or to know more about the Lord and looking for a church home, we encourage you to come forward today. Let's stand together as we sing.
as I mentioned to you earlier, um, Janet and I went to Stone Mountain and hiked around the mountain and had this a delightful day. And she told me, you know, this is something she hadn't been able to do in a long time because of work and because when she has taken vacation off, she's going to spend time with her mother uh, because of her poor health. And um, what a joy it was to be with her, to uh, know with her, to remain in her, to abide in her um, yesterday and have that time together. Well, just think of those experiences you've had with loved ones Think how powerful that will be with the one who loves us like none other, our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in his grace and peace. Amen.